Hi guys, I'm Sarah from Squeak Dreams. Welcome back to the channel. This video will help you identify which official guinea pig breeds your piggies are closest to. Guinea pigs are hugely variable. They've been pets for a long, long time, so people have bred for different traits. It's one of the things that makes them a really attractive pet. I knew a bit about guinea pig breeds before, but when I read that there's 51 official breeds accepted by the British KV Council, I was really surprised but often these are different combinations of hair types and hair colours. So an easier way of understanding guinea pig breeds is to look at all the hair colours and then the different hair types or hairstyles as I like to think of them. And obviously most pet guinea pigs aren't pedigrees but that doesn't mean that this stuff can't apply. It means that your piggies might have multiple traits from different breeds which I think is really cool. So when I was making this video, I decided to reach out to you guys and ask for photos of your guinea pigs. And I was actually amazed at the huge response I got. So most of the gorgeous piggy photos in this video are your real pets. Thank you everyone who sent in photos. And for those of you who are looking for an update on my piggy Lyra, she is feeling much better and back to her normal self. So we're going to start off by looking at hair types and up first I have short haired piggies and there are three in this category. Self piggies are all one colour and if you're going for the pedigree they can't have a single hair that's a different colour. There are around 15 different colour types that self guinea pigs can be. Moving on we've got the American short haired piggy which is another really common guinea pig breed and it differs from the self in that they can be either all one colour or have colour combinations, maybe two or three different colours in their coat. Thirdly, we've got the crested guinea pigs. Now I've put them in with short haired piggies because you often see this feature in short haired pigs, especially from pet shops. Crested guinea pigs have a rosette or a crest right on top of their head between the ears and it sort of gives them a funny little wig type look about them. So in American crested guinea pigs, the hair of the crest is a different colour from the rest of the body, whereas in English crested pigs, the hair of the crest is the same colour. And although I've put it in with the short haired category, long haired piggies and rough haired piggies can also have crests on top of their head, whether they are pure breeds or mixed breeds. Next up is the rough haired guinea pigs and in this group we've got Abyssinians, Teddies, Rexes and Swiss piggies and Ridgeback pigs. First up, Abyssinian piggies which are identified by multiple rosettes all along the pig's body. This this gives them a spiky, funky hairstyle that loads of people fall in love with. That's why Abyssinians are such a popular guinea pig breed. To be a pedigree Abyssinian, the rosettes and the ridges between them need to be perfectly spaced, like a work of art. <laughs> Most pet shop piggies won't meet this standard, but if your piggy has rosettes all along their body, then that points to them having Abyssinian genes. And in my own pigs, I can easily see that Willow, Phoebe and Roxy here all have Abyssinian genes as they all feature rosettes right along their bodies. Next up is a three in one. So the Rex, Teddy and Swiss breeds all have a Rex type coat made up of very dense, fuzzy and bouncy hair, which is short in Teddies and Rexes to medium length in Swiss piggies. It's fairly common to get mixed breeds with some Rex or Teddy genes in them. Just look out for that coarse hair that sort of stands on end. These piggies are super cute. And thirdly, we've got Ridgeback Piggies. These are an emerging breed and basically they don't have as many rosettes as a full Abyssinian. So if you have a piggy that is not quite a full Abyssinian and has a sort of ridge hairstyle going on, then they might more closely represent a Ridgeback Piggy. Are you licking me? You want to go back? Yes. And next category is the long haired piggies where you've got a lot of variation in hair types. First up we've got Shelties and Coronets. So Shelties which are also known as silky guinea pigs are long haired piggies with no rosettes where the hair sort of sweeps back away from the face and down the body. And Coronets are basically Shelties but they've got that cute little crest on top of their head. Next up we have Texel and Merino piggies. So like Sheltie guinea pigs they have hair with no rosettes that sweeps back from the face. It's quite short around the face, but the rest of the coat is long, it's coarser and it's curly. 
And again, the difference between a texel and a merino is that little crest on top of their head. The next long-haired piggy is the Peruvian, which is another traditional, long-established breed. This differs from the Shelties and the Texels because Peruvians do have a couple of rosettes, which sends the hair forwards and up and over the face. And also, Peruvian hair is one of the longest of all the guinea pig breeds. It can reach up to 50 centimetres in length. So obviously, if you're keeping a purebred Peruvian as a pet, as well as many of the other long-haired piggies, you're you're going to want to trim their hair and keep it more manageable and clean for them. Now moving on to some of the newer or more recently emerging long-haired guinea pig breeds, we have the Lunkaya piggy. These are basically a Peruvian, they have rosettes, but unlike the straight smooth hair of the Peruvian, Lunkayas have curly hair, which forms ringlets that sort of spring away from the body, meaning you can't even tell whether there's any rosettes there or not. So my piggy Lyra here is actually a purebred Lunkaya piggy. She was from a breeder, but because the layout of her coat wasn't quite show quality, she was sold as a pet guinea pig, and I'm so glad that I picked her up. Another newer breed is the Alpaca guinea pig, which falls somewhere between a Texel and a Peruvian, in that they've got a couple of rosettes on their body, but their hair type is coarse, fuzzy, curly, and more Rex-like in character. And one more long-haired piggy, we've got the slight crazy sounding Shiba Mini Yak guinea pig. <laughs> this isn't a proper recognised breed in a lot of countries, but it is in Australia, so I'm gonna put it in here, why not? These are basically a cross between an Abyssinian and a Peruvian. They've got the multiple rosettes of Abyssinian combined with the long smooth hair of the Peruvian. The Shiba Mini Yaks, the hair is going in all sorts of crazy directions, and it also doesn't get as long as a purebred Peruvian it only gets to about floor length or a little bit longer. Moving on, and we have the no-haired guinea pigs. <laughs> so these are skinny pigs and Baldwin pigs, and I think you would realise if you had one of these. They are very similar in that they're both almost hairless, but you can get some hair on the nose and the paws. The main difference between skinny and Baldwin piggies is that Baldwin piggies are actually born with a full coat of hair, but then it falls out after they reach about two months old, whereas skinny pigs are born almost hairless and stay that way. Both these types of guinea pig need a bit more care in that they need to be kept in a warm environment to help them regulate their body temperature better. Next, let's have a look at hair colours. You can have guinea pigs that are all one colour, bicolour piggies or tricolour piggies. And while some guinea pig breeds like self piggies have to be all one colour, the vast majority of the breeds can be different colour combinations. And sometimes it's the colours and the patterns in a breed that define it. Plain self colours include white, black, cream, golden, red, chocolate, beige, lilac, saffron, buff, and blue. Bicolours, like the name suggests, are a mix of two different colour combinations. And one of the most recognisable breeds of guinea pig is the Dutch guinea pig. This has white paired with another colour such as brown, and the brown will be two patches either side of their face with the white stripe coming down the middle, and then brown on the rear section of the body. Other bicolour patterns include tortoiseshell with reddish brown and black patches, Dalmatian which have a solid or striped head and a body with white and black spots, harlequin piggies which have a cream and a black patchwork look, the magpie guinea pig which has black and white patches or stripes, roan piggies have a solid head and a more speckled coat, Himalayan piggies which are white and develop black or chocolate coloured hair on their ears, nose and paws, and finally foxes, otters and tan guinea pigs are all pretty colouring which combines a dark and a light colour with the light highlighting areas around the eyes, the chest and the stomach. And then you've got tricolour piggies, and this is tortoiseshell and white guinea pigs. I'd never really thought about it before, but you don't see guinea pigs with four or more colours in their coat. And I was really interested to read that guinea pigs can't have two colours from the same colour group. The colour groups are black, 
red and white. Black has the browns and the darker shades, the greys, things like that. The red group has the ginger and lighter coloured browns and more sandy or cream colours and then white is just white. So if you've got a tricolour piggy then they've got one colour from each group and that's the maximum they can have. Two other hair type and colour variations that you might see are agouti guinea pigs. This is really quite amazing colouring and lots of people really like it so each in individual hair changes colour and is ticked with a different shade at the end of the hair. The most common ones are silver and golden agoutis but you do get other ones such as chocolate, cinnamon and lemon and the agouti hair can occur with plain hair in bicolour and tricolour biggies. So like Lyra, she's a grey and white agouti. The dark brown colour in Willow's coat also has flecks of light brown on the ends of the hairs, so she has agouti in those dark brown patches. Roxy and Phoebe don't have any agouti colouring in their coat. And then you've got the satin hair variety which again can apply to many different breeds. Guinea pigs with satin coats actually have hollow hair fibres. It makes the hair really reflective and they just look like super shiny guinea pigs. Satin coats are not usually seen in pet guinea pigs and unfortunately the genes that give this coat type have been linked with osteodystrophy and other health problems. So in some countries it's no longer recognised as an official breed because they want to protect the welfare of guinea pigs. So that's all the different hairstyles and colour combinations. I hope you found it interesting and if this helped you find out what breed characteristics your own piggies have then leave me a comment below and just to say whilst it's nice to know about different guinea pig breeds and be able to recognise different features don't let it be the main thing that determines where you get your guinea pigs from or what type of guinea pigs you get. Whether your guinea pigs are pedigrees or mixed piggies with different features from different breeds in them, it's their personality which becomes the main thing that becomes important to you as an owner, not really the way they look. That's all for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new, I know I definitely did when I was researching for it. Hopefully it's not been information overload either, if you did make it to the end of the video then leave me the little hamster face in the comments so I know that you made it this far. So that's everything for today and we will see you in the next video, bye bye!